folks. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. It is Wednesday, January 15th, 2025. I was going to do this report about what I discovered about the two earthquakes that occurred there in Virginia. Uh, one, uh, a 2.8 and a 2.3. But I was out looking for places where I can move. My daughter, as you know, she wants me out. And two of the places that I did look at want a deposit per cat of between $300 and $500 deposit. Yeah, my last apartment, I lived there for 12 years, so I didn't know that uh, real estates were expecting to uh, charge so much money. My last apartment, when the new owner bought it, he just upped uh, the deposit that I had already established by $50. And that was just for all four of my cats, not each cat. But now they want anywhere between 300 to $500 per pet, yeah, to rent something. Um, I, when I got home, I told my daughter that they wanted that much money. And she goes, well, that's your problem, not mine. Another thing I discovered, being a prepper, I've paid cash for everything. I've never owned a credit card in my life. I went on Credit Karma to see what my credit score was and they don't have anything because I have no credit established. I don't have anything for bad credit either, which is a good thing. But you think because you have no bad credit, that would be um, a plus to you. But it isn't nowadays. So they suggested I apply for a credit card, which I did. But that's going to take a long time to establish credit when I've been, been paying cash for everything. I've bought three homes throughout my lifetime. Always paid cash. Um, I bought them through owners directly, made my payments every month to the bank. But because it was private owners, that didn't go towards any positive credit. Lord, the world has changed. I mean, back in the day when I first started working, you didn't need that piece of paper showing you had a degree. All the employer would do is ask what high school you went to, and they would look at your work history. All they cared about is if you had actually graduated from high school. And then, you know, you worked your way up through the business by showing how well of a job that you could do. And that was it. Not anymore. Yeah, nowadays you need that piece of paper and you need a credit history. So keep praying for me. Yeah, like my daughter said, um, it's your problem. It is my problem. Try to do everything right, you know, throughout my life. And now it's biting me in the but anyways, looking up for this earthquake, and I think I found out why it had occurred. Both these earthquakes were real shallow. They weren't deep down to the, where the bedrock is at. But I think uh, the bedrock has got a lot to do with what happened here. We got the North American plate slowly moving towards the west, putting strain on these different fault zones. And we got the highest fault zone drawn out in red here. It's the northernmost part of the Eastern Piedmont Fault System, which stretches from Alabama to Virginia. Here's the two earthquakes, and you can see the magnitude 2.8, which was real shallow, 0 0.1 miles. And then afterwards, the following day, there was a 2.3, um, 0, 0.0 miles. The uh, 2.3 occurred at 2.50 a.m. local time. This was the day after the magnitude 2.8. 231 people said they felt it and it was given an intensity level of 5. The 2.8 uh, earthquake occurred at 5.22 p.m. the day before and 1,540 people said they felt it. Both these earthquakes were given an intensity level of 5. Because of the depth of the earthquakes, um, being so shallow, it was felt over a very large area. Um, the deeper the earthquake, the less likely that people feel them. Here we have an image of an example of a fault zone with the fault zone grinding and then it depositing all this gravel and loose sand and um, clay. And it gives you all the scientific terms of the different layers of that ground up rock that has been deposited from the fault zone. This area was all developed because of the collision between the North American continent and the African continent. 
So this has got a lot of fill and a lot of that ground up rock um, from the fault zones deposited in different locations. We got the Blue Ridge Mountains and you can see Richmond, Virginia, which is close to where this earthquake occurred. Here we have another geology map of Virginia so showing the different types of rock. And you can see here yellow. Let me try and make this bigger for you. This was all laid down, developed supposedly between 1 and 70 million years ago. It's got all that ground up rock. It's got um, clay. And it looks like diaphormous earth. Sand clay. Um, it's hard to read. It's kind of blurry, isn't it? Current stress released beneath the coastal plain may be influenced by the instability of the Hylas fault zone and, yeah, the other faults that run throughout the Piedmont. There is ample evidence that sediment is being affected by the movement along the basement faults. Movement along the Hylas fault can cause deformation and fracturing within the basement rock, sometimes leading to earthquakes. So I think we got the North American plate putting pressure here along the Hales Fault. And we ended up with these two earthquakes, which is an indication that we probably have something much larger coming. Kind of like Dynamos, you know, you got the effect of the North American plate and the uh, Atlantic plate, which used to be the African plate, slowly moving west, putting pressure on the Hales Fault. Yeah, and creating an effect pressure on the basement rock, which then created more than likely these two earthquakes. If you'd like to know more information and where I got it from, if you look, if you can, down below in the more information box below the video, you'll see links there to several articles. More than likely, the Hylas Fault extends all the way down to the basement rock. Try to find out how deep the basement rock was, but I couldn't find any information about that. Um, little research has been done for this location. There was a call to send out scientists to do more research about the different types of soil and the earthquakes here, but they're probably waiting for some young student at some university to go out and do the research for them. So I heard that the earthquake didn't last that long, but it was felt over a very large area. And there was some light damage, things being knocked off the shelves. And a day or two before that, the power went out um, somewhere close to the same location, which was really odd. Or was it the water? I, I don't remember what was sent to me. Anyways, because this area extends so far um, from Alabama all the way to Virginia, yeah, and it's showing that there is definitely movement of the the basement rock, you could have an earthquake, a large earthquake anywhere between Alabama and Virginia, which would be devastating. The largest earthquake uh, close to this location was back in 2011, a magnitude 5.8. And yeah, that one too caused a lot of damage because of the formation of the, the soil, the rock. It was over a very large area. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much for your support. And thank you very much for sharing my videos. Yeah, I think um, YouTube is uh, throttling me, me back along with a lot of other people. So the notifications don't go out very fast. Always be prepared for a disaster. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.